Coach is on his way, everyone. Good afternoon. Yes, 1201. Good afternoon. Hope everybody's doing okay. Doing fine. How are you, Annabelle? I'm good. It's a uh, um, you know, Monday. It's Monday. It feels particularly Monday-ish today. It really does today. I have to I have to agree with you on that one. Dragging ass a bit, but We'll get it. We'll get there. Be worse next week after a um, seven o'clock game. I mean, we've been spoiled so far. Two noon starts. It's like, whew. especially after last year. all right i'll remind everybody after coaches open us up that uh when we go to questions just use the raise hand emoji and um, we'll get right to it hope everybody's doing well um i'd like to start out just thanking the fans and uh students, parents, recruits, everyone that came to, uh, to our home opener. And uh, appreciate those of you that didn't let a little rain drive you out of your seats. That was awesome to see. And uh, it was good to be home. And it was great to have some of our former players there as well. And uh, seeing uh, Emeka and Kelvin on the sideline was pretty awesome just to catch up with those guys. Um, as far as the game, uh, you know, interesting week in college football. You know, I think a lot of people probably wish they would have won by one uh, this past week. Um, makes our first game feel a little bit better, you know, seeing some of the teams go down in week two. But uh, it's good to be 2-0. and oh. I thought uh, as far as our team and our staff, there's a lot of improvement from week one to week two. Uh, I think everyone took to heart the respective areas of emphasis and really worked hard uh, to put their improvement on film. You know, I think the guys really worked, um, challenged them to, to bring their goals to life and put action behind what they're talking about, to practice a little bit differently, uh, to really increase our, our cardio at practice, not with the number of plays, but how hard we're playing, how far we're running, and uh, to earn the plays that you want to make on Saturday in practice uh, on Tuesday and Wednesday, and I felt like that happened. Uh, we played complimentary football. It was good to see that again. Um, you know, we got to play a lot of players. I, I saw a thing today. There was 83 guys that played in the game for us, which may or may not be a record, but it's a lot. And uh, it was fun to see some of those guys that, you know, serve as walk-ons um, that maybe not get a lot of reps in games, get out there and make plays. I mean, that was awesome for them. And good to get some other players in there that we're evaluating still. and. You know, it's good for their development. I thought we blocked and tackled better, which you heard me in my press conference last week. That was kind of the biggest area of disappointment were the two fundamentals of football. And uh, guys took that to heart. We finished drives in the red zone. We were four for four on offense. And I think it's the a team that has to continue to take the same approach as we move forward. And the thing that you forget um, – this team has a lot of guys that missed spring ball. You know, we had guys, as you know, that had season ending injuries a year ago, had surgeries that were not cleared yet. And so some of them were playing their first game for uh, almost a year on the calendar. And when I say some, there was seven or eight of them in that boat. So I don't say that as an excuse. I say that as a point of emphasis that this team has to improve every week because we missed a lot of time on the field with several players. You know, and, and regardless how many snaps you have, there's a, a timeline that you have to go through, you know, to improve. You have to see things on film. You have to, yes, knock rust off, but more just to compete at that level 
against competitive players uh, where it's live and you're going to see a lot of growth, you know, if we take that to heart. And so it's a team that has to improve week in and week out. And so we're going to stay on that, that mantra. Um, I thought, you know, we used our first week as an opportunity to learn and grow. Um, we have to do the same this week and uh, to fuel the meeting rooms and the practice fields with detailed goals and, and a formulated action plan to get better. You know, I think individual improvement, individual development increases our ability to collectively improve as a team. And the good thing is there was 83 guys that got visual, um, you know, for their resume. And uh, your film is your resume as a player. And now they know what they got to work on. So, you know, positives on offense. I think we strained more. I thought uh, offensively we worked hard get a body on a body, not just in the box, but on the perimeter. Uh, you guys saw, see a lot of guys playing with effort in, in the run game. Um, we were 100%, as I mentioned, in the red zone. We are four for four. Second week in a row, not giving up a sack uh, in protection. I thought our running backs were productive, not just running the football, but in the screen game, catching the football. Drop back game, Jordan Houston had a nice down the field catch for a touchdown. You know, it was good to see Devin uh, Leary just back to being himself and playing ball, running the show, making plays, uh, buying time in the pocket, extending plays. He played a really good football game and uh, what we expect to see. You know, I thought it was good to see Chris Tootle make that play in the end zone for him and his confidence. And it's good to see a lot of guys, you know, with firsts. Anthony, Anthony Smith's first touchdown, Jalen Coit's first touchdown, Delbert Mims' first touchdown. So, it was good for those guys. You know, negatives, we had four penalties on offense. Two of them were pre-snap in the red zone. We had one turnover. You know, Delbert was straining for extra yards and lost the ball, and, and that possession ended up being a field goal. The defense held them, and we dropped four passes that we thought were catchable. So those are all things we got to do better. You know, on defense, we had three takeaways. Uh, uh, Tyler Baker-Williams had uh, a forced fumble and an interception. And then Jalen Frazier got the ricochet interception off Jordan Poole. You know, I thought we played well in the run game. It was a different, you know, offense than we expected. There was a lot of empties. So, you know, we did stop the run. They were not trying to run the ball a lot, but we did take that away. I thought we got off blocks better, uh, especially at corner. You could see there was a lot of perimeter screens. They had to get off blocks and tackle. And it was good to see that, you know, uh, I thought Dariq Pitts did a really nice job there. Tayshawn Smith did a nice job there. We definitely tackled better. Uh, we went from 26 to nine missed tackles, and, and um, that's with a lot of the starters out too, so good to see. We had nine three and outs, a fourth down stop. We had no pre-snap penalties, and, and I thought we played tighter coverage. You know, we gave the blitzes a chance to get home. We defended some deep balls. Um, Negatives, we lost contain on a pressure that would have been a sack, and that's something we've got to stop, especially with who we're playing this week. And we had a DPI that we could have avoided. Aiden, you know, grabbed a guy when he didn't need to. Um, on special teams, it's good to see Chris Dunn go two for two. Uh, Colin Smith really kicked off well for us, and, and that's a weapon to have when he's doing that. You know, obviously eliminates a phase of the game for the other team. I thought our punt coverage was elite. You know, Daryl Jones and Chris Smith and Sean Brown covered punts very well. Uh, I think we can do a better job with our hang time still there. Uh, I thought our punt return game was really solid. You know, Thayer had two really big returns, and then Jalen Coit got in and uh, had a good return himself. The guys are playing smart. There, there's so many opportunities um, on punt return and kickoff return for guys to clip, and you see our guys using good technique and making smart decisions at the moment of truth. So that's great to see their football IQ and their trainings paying off. You know, excited to, to come um, play another game at home and have our first night game of the season. I just saw they announced uh, the following week's games at night at home as well. So we got back-to-back -back night games. We will be wearing our uh, all-black uniforms this week. So excited. I know players are excited about that. And uh, we need a raucous crowd. You know, we need our 12th man to be here and to be fired up. And we're playing a really good football team in Texas Tech, a, a very veteran team. Um, I looked at their defensive depth chart 
first thing this morning and first thing you see is they got 10 guys that are either seniors or grad transfers. Uh, it's a very old group on defense. And I'll get into their personnel here in a minute. But just starting with our staff, you know, Joey McGuire, their head coach, is a very good friend. Uh, when I was coaching at Kansas, he was a first-time head coach at Cedar Hill High School in Dallas, and I signed his first Division I player there, Marcus Herford, who's now a coach. He was a great young man. I got to know Joey very well, and, and he became a state championship coach there and then moved his way up in the profession. He's done a great job as a college coach. I was excited to see him get to be a head coach at Tech. And um, I remember eating pregame meal with his team. He had the best chicken fried steak and gravy you've ever had before the game. Um, just crushing that with him. So he's a good dude. And he'll have his team ready to play. You know, they're coming off a double OT win against a ranked Houston team and uh, battled in that game. So it was an emotional win for them as well. You know, they beat Mississippi State uh, in their bowl game last year, who, as we know, we didn't play well against. Beat them convincingly. And a lot of that team is back. So, you know, I look at them, uh, their team that has a chip on their shoulder. You know, oftentimes some of the other schools in Texas maybe not get the notoriety uh, of Texas and Texas A&M. And, and I think those kids play with a chip on their shoulder there because of that. So have a lot of respect for Texas Tech, always have. Um, you know, 10 starters back on defense that are all older kids. Like I mentioned, they're very long. They've recruited long guys. Their defensive front has got uh, really tall defensive ends. Their linebackers are very athletic. They run well. Uh, their corners are long. And, and Coach Tim DeRuiter is a veteran D coordinator. You know, hired him from Oregon. He's been a head coach. Brings a lot of different looks and pressures and uh, does a lot of you know, man to man coverage. Uh, offensively, uh, they're up tempo, they're spread, you know, typical formations that you see. But they got very long, rangy outside receivers. Their quarterback can run and, and has a great arm. You know, you'll see him throw deep out routes to the field from the far hash and does it with ease and uh, can make plays on his feet. Won the game with his feet on a scramble last week. It's a very good team you know, coming to town, a team that uh, is, is being mentioned in the top 25. They play hard. They got good players, good coaches. I'm, I'm excited, you know, about the matchup and uh, looking forward to – our students and, and our fans and our parents and recruits get tuned up and have a great time and give us a lot of noise, man. We need it. And I think there's nothing better than a night game at the Carter when it's rocking, you know, it's supposed to be beautiful weather too. So as far as the health of our roster, uh, we'll have Peyton back, expect to have shy battle back as well. And as you know, Trent's out four to six weeks. So other than that, you know, we're very healthy as we get ready for this game. Any questions? Aaron Beard. Hey, Dave, did want to follow up on uh, Coach Beck being upstairs. Kind of what were your conversations like uh, in review after the game? Yeah, no, he liked it. You know, felt like he could see it. It'll be something we continue. It was a positive, I think, all the way around. David. Hey, Coach, uh, over the last 24 hours, your name has been mentioned uh, as a possible replacement for um, S Scott Frost at Nebraska. Is that a position you're interested in? Dude, it's week three of the season, man. I'm so fired up to coach my team this week. So, no, I'm so excited about playing at home and coaching the Wolfpack. And it's not the first time that uh, names have been on lists. So, you know, it is what it is when you talk about that. But I can't wait to get ready for this game. I mean, this is a big one for us and a big season and a great group of guys. So that's where my head and my heart is. Evan. Coach, Texas Tech has done a great job in the red zone this year. They are six for eight and then five for eight for scoring touchdowns. How does how do you take a defensive approach to try and stop them and put some more pressure on that offense to try and halt their uh, their momentum? Well, yeah, I mean, we'll get into all that in the game plan. You know, the red zone's tight spaces. It's, uh, you know, you, you got to have a body on a body in coverage. You got to be able to contend um, for jump balls. Um, you know, depending on what they're doing, you, you've got to be ready for pick routes down there as well. You know, in the run game, plus one runs with a big quarterback. I mean, we're going to have to tackle and get off blocks. So, you know, they're a good football team. You know, that's what you would expect. And, 
really in, in week one they weren't really challenged you know a whole lot and, and this past week that was a back and forth game so you can't get really too much into stats I don't think after two weeks you know it takes time to really kind of balance out what you are but you know I think just in general when you uh face a team with an athletic quarterback that's always a major factor as you get closer and closer to the goal line Gibby yeah Dave does this team can you know talent wise does it match up with anybody you play in the ACC anybody similar to, to what you face on down the road possibly yeah no I think so you know I think there's a lot of teams that have similar styles um you know we play Florida State Louisville Clemson I mean it's spread offense big receivers you know um up tempo you know defensive line they're multiple so you know you can't really compare them anyway to one one particular team but you know body types and style of play very similar to a lot of the teams we'll face in the league Dave well I got you a lot a lot of teams like you guys might shy away from from games like this in an early season you know they pick the uh some cupcakes and you guys have played some really, really tough teams this year already on non-schedule. Uh, do you like that? Yeah, I think, you know, gets you ready for what's coming. Um, and I think you have to do a good job um, picking the right teams to play non-conference wise. I've always felt like, um, and this one's a little unique. Usually we'll try to play a team in our recruiting area. That's non-conference. It's just not as easy as you think to find games, you know, Sometimes you can't. So, you know, we were able to find a team similar to us. I think there's a lot of similarities in these schools when you look at, you know, just uh, the way that they play and the, and the, you know, the chip on the shoulder, their fans are, if you've ever been to Lubbock for a game, they have an awesome game day, you know, so, you know, it's a good team to play. I, I just think in general, from a model of scheduling, you'll probably, if you study it, it's going to be more regional teams if we can make it that way, just from a recruiting standpoint and for parents to be able to travel when you go on the road and all those things. James? Yeah, Dave, it looks like you guys made a uh, concerted effort to get Anthony Smith and, and Julian Graves snaps early. Was that by design coming out of ECU or maybe game flow for this specific game? No, I wanted them to play more in ECU game. You know, I was disappointed they didn't. Um, you know, and like I told you guys last week, sometimes as position coaches, you you stick with what's more comfortable. Um, to me, you know, those are two names of guys. There's others at other positions that, you know, they don't have to play as much as the older guys, but they need to play enough to develop and grow because they're very talented. And we need to keep getting those guys in the game because the more they play, the better they're going to get. And I think that confidence and your nerves change, you know, as you're used to being out there. So those are two guys that we look at in the receiver room as guys that will be the future of that position as we move forward down the road, you know, and we lose Thayer Thomas and we lose Devin Carter, you know, familiar faces. You're going to have your younger group. You're seeing Porter on the field a little bit more and we go 10 personnel, but that younger group receivers, Jalen Coit's another one, you know, that got in the game and made some plays. It, it helps to play them not just in mop-up duty, so that if there's an injury, they're not nervous going in the game at Clemson, you know? Uh, so that's something that I believe in, and, and, you know, we just need to do a good job as coaches, and I need to make sure I'm on top of that with them to, to get those kids in the game. And I don't know what the rep count is, you know, but there's just got to be a rotation where they're showing up in there, you know, in each half. And just to follow up, are those two or three guys uh... – can they specifically help you this season as well? You know, obviously, um, with what you've seen from them. You're talking about Julian and Anthony, those two? Yeah, and, and Jalen as well, quite. Yeah, yeah. I think all, all those guys are guys that we're excited about, you know. I mean, we have good players in that room. So, you know, I think we're excited about who's in front of them too. You know, Daryl Jones is playing good football for us right now. Thayer is playing really good football for us, you know. We have a lot of respect for what Devin Carter has done and, the plays that he can make so it's nice to have a rotation you know I, I would equate it to some of the basketball teams that I used to watch growing up you know the five guys would go out and the other five would come in and they would just keep playing and wear the other team down you know and if you have a rotation at a position where you can do that it's helpful because your guys can play faster when they're fresh you don't always have that luxury you know and so there's going to be things that certain players do better than others and we're going to use them for that um 
But in general, you want to have a rotation where you can get guys in and out of the game and keep them fresh, just like you see us doing at running back and on the defensive line and, and some in the secondary too. Appreciate it, Dave. Yep. Chip. Yeah, Coach, uh, Malik Dunlap's a player that you like, brought in out of Charlotte, and he played for you for a few years. Just what do you remember about the way, you know, he helped your program, and, and what were the reasons for him uh, leaving to go to Texas Tech? Yeah, I'm not going to speak on that. You know, I'm happy happy for Malik. I'm glad he's having success. Uh, as a young man, we really enjoyed having in our program, and, and he made a decision to leave, and he's having success where he's at. So I think that's great for him. Aaron. Aaron Beard. Uh, David Thompson. Coach, you mentioned last year, you know, sort of some frustrations with the amount of night games that you had. But are you excited to kind of have these back to back night games, have this atmosphere, you know, so you guys can get ready for what will probably be a prime time game against Clemson in a couple of weeks? Yeah, you know, I think. Playing at night um, is great. I love it. <clears throat> Playing at night, eight of nine games, uh, particularly when you're traveling and getting home at four in the morning or five in the morning, that's a different conversation, David. You know, so uh, I asked the ACC to be cognizant of that for player health, you know, and, and really for coach health. Like, you know, it, it, we're working on short hours that become shorter, and that's not good for your your mental health. It's not good for your physical health, I think. There just needs to be a balance, you know, hey, this team just played three in a row at night. Let's put them on at 3.30 if they're a marquee game, you know. Um, but in general, yeah, I mean, I love what it does for the fans, you know, the, how they get into that. And it's good for recruiting because people have time to get to your games and our players like playing under the lights. There's a lot of positives, but the over and over and over and over part of it, particularly after road games, just needs to be monitored by the league or by the television networks, whoever's pulling the trigger on that to, keep the health of the student athletes and the coaches in mind. Evan. Coach, how do you, as a head coach, get your players, get your coaches to turn up the intensity during practices? What do you change when you go from an opponent like Charleston Southern uh, preparing for them and then preparing for a big 12 opponent like Texas Tech? Well, last week, uh, there was just an embarrassing bunch of film to look at, which made you want to do things differently as a player, you know, they didn't like how they looked on film. They knew that they needed to prepare in a different way. I challenged them to do that and they did, and they liked the results. So when that happens, you talk about it like, Hey, let's, let's study the last seven days, guys. Here's how we felt. I'm like talking about yesterday. Now, seven days prior to yesterday, we felt really bad sitting in our seats in here about what we put on film and how we coached. And then look what we did. We took that information. We came up with a different plan. We went to work. We had a very, very aggressive Tuesday. Guys ran all over the place. They were fatigued after. Did it again on a shorter practice, but same intensity on Wednesday. And look at the results. You know, the guys played better. And so they know that. And obviously they know the competition goes up with Texas Tech. So that's going to kind of handle it on its own from that standpoint. But the process of what we did uh, is discussed. It is studied. The kids do understand the why behind it, and they understand the reward that comes from it. And so I think it'll just, you know, kind of help itself as we go forward. Aaron, you're back. I appear to be back. Um, Dave, I wanted to ask you about penalties, so, sort of in line with that, about you review your process. And if if you answered this while I got disconnected, I apologize. Uh, what are those sessions like specific to penalties when you're going through film study and saying this was a bad penalty? You talked about pre-snaps, all those things that go into that. Like, how do you really drill that message home when you're watching film? I mean, do you, I don't want to use the word embarrass a guy, but you have to point it out to him bluntly. I would yeah, we do. It's, it's, uh, it's conversation. You know, one of the things I do is, is show them why we call it the formula, but how we won the game, you know? And so you go through the areas and, Penalties is the one of the areas. So, you know, we have focus penalties. Those are your pre-snap things that you just mentioned. So we'll talk about it. All right. We had in this game, we had two offsides um, on the off, excuse me, on the offense. So here's the two players. Their names are up there on the PowerPoint. Both of these penalties were in the red zone. That can have a negative effect on scoring. You took us from first and 10 to first and 15. 
Um, we had another one on a fourth and four on a punt where a guy false started, but we actually got them to jump off sides. And if had we not flinched, we would have got a first down. So we discuss what happens in those situations. And then you go to the next one. All right, during the play, combat penalties is what I call it. We had these penalties. We had a DPI. Sometimes I'll tell them like, hey, that was good coverage. You know, that doesn't get called very often. I wouldn't change anything. The ref just saw it a different way. Sometimes I'll tell them like in this case, you can't grab a guy. You know, we flat grabbed the guy and we didn't need to. You know, there were three holding penalties called. I thought two of them were calls that never get made, you know. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on stuff like that. But on the other one, our hands are outside and we're jerking a guy. That's different. You're going to discuss the technique behind that penalty. And then we even discussed penalties that weren't called that we thought probably should have been called, you know. And I, hey, we had a play where we picked a guy up and threw him down. Seen that called. We got to learn from that. We got away with one right there. So, you know, it's just an education of, Here's what happened in the game. Here's what we can take from these moments. And then you go to the next phase. Here's the red zone. Here's what happened. Here's third down. Here's what happened. Like, you know, and so just spending time on not just celebrating that we got pancakes and handing out bottles of syrup, but also teaching, you know, from the game so that we can learn and get better as we move forward. Brian Murphy. Hey, coach. Um, have you given much thought to to the potential 12 game playoff and what that might look like and how that might change uh, how you schedule non-conference in particular? Yeah. You know, I'm excited about the access. Um, uh, there's so many questions that, you know, I have just because I've been in the playoffs twice as an FCS coach and how long those seasons were. We played 16 games one year and 15 the other, and it's 31 games in two years that we played. Um, how it impacts the academic schedule, what happens to bowl games, what happens to our, you know, we're scheduled out, as you guys know, like till 2030, you know, so like what happens to some of those games? So there's a lot of questions, but we haven't gotten to that. We're trying to win our third game right now. Um, that's kind of where my head is, but those are things that came up. You know, I am excited that the conference champions from the power five you know, leagues get a automatic berth and I think that's good. You know, there's access for teams to get in and we'll see where it goes. Do you think, you know, certainly there was a lot of talk last week, you know, about the game against East Carolina. And if, if, you know, things had gone differently, you know, no, no chance at the playoff in a new system, you could lose a game like that and still come back and, and have a team that's, that's really going well at the end of the season, um, you know, make some noise in a playoff. Yeah, you could, you know, obviously the, the, the non-conference games won't count in your conference championship as far as getting there that way. Um, but yeah, there could be a lot of change. As you know, there's been a lot of changes in the last 24 months to a college football period. And so wouldn't be a surprise to see a lot more in the next 12, you know, as we move forward with this, just to get the answers that we're all kind of looking for. Thanks, Coach. You bet. David. You mentioned uh, Peyton coming back. You know, how big is that for the defense against, you know, playing against this kind of opponent? Well, first, I'm excited for him. You know, um, he feels really good. He's in a good space. Uh, gives us another really good athlete to play a spread offense with. Um, and one that's excited to go out there and play with his teammates and that misses playing football, you know? And so the rotation, as I've been talking about, gets a little better, you know, because Jalen Scott's playing really good. And that's the thing, like, so, you know, we'll be able to play Peyton and play Jalen and, you know, Jalen can take some reps off of multiple guys because he's cross-trained to play multiple positions. And it's good to get, you know, Betty some more reps to help Isaiah. It's good to get, you know, um, Jalen Parker some reps to help Drake. So all those things, it's a long season. There's a lot of plays. Um, we didn't have to play a lot in this past game, but in this next one, you know, they're a team that tries to snap it as many times as they can. So we got to have that rotation and having Peyton back in the depth chart helps us there. All right, we're going to wrap this up pretty soon. Uh, Chip. Yeah, Coach, we were talking to Demi last week. He mentioned that he didn't get a lot of offers from a lot of the Power Five-type schools. What did you guys see in him that maybe some of the others didn't uh, when you were recruiting him? Well, I don't know what the others didn't see. I mean, we saw a really good football player, you know, tough, guy that can see, has vision, uh, accelerates quickly, catches the ball well. 
physical, uh, yards after contact, all the things you see now. So, you know, that was a weird time. And I'm not saying he might have had a lot more if coaches were allowed to be out in schools. You just never know. But that was a different time in recruiting. You know, we weren't allowed to go out on the road. All these things were done on video and through Zoom calls. And, yeah, that was a very, very challenging year of recruiting. So we're fortunate um, to have another great player from the state of New Jersey come down and join us because – you look at the season so far, you had Josiah blocking a punt for a touchdown, Demi doing what he's doing, Devin Leary doing what he's doing. That's been a state that's been good to us. Going to take two more. Aaron? Dave, uh, I was curious your reaction to the Appalachian State win and also <laughs> you know, the big four teams, you guys included, are combined, I think, 9-0, and oh, five road wins between the four of the ACC teams in this state. I'm, just your thoughts on kind of the way the start for the football in this state uh, at this at FBS level. Well, one, I'm super happy for Sean Clark and his staff. I know those coaches there. They're awesome guys, man. And, you know, my oldest son, Jacob, goes to App State. He was so excited during that game. Um, so I think it's awesome. What an upset win for them. And couldn't have happened to a better group of people. Really uh, tremendous amount of respect and love. Uh, for that staff and and the experience my son's had there as a student has been very, very positive. So great for Boone and, and that community. Um, and, you know, as far as the league and the state and all that, I mean, we're always cheering for people to, to do well in our conference. And, you know, it's great that guys are going on the road and getting the job done. Um, I was happy for Coach Elko. I know that was a big win for them at Duke, getting Northwestern and, and that game for him was a big win. And, um, coach Clawson got a good win against a, you know, coach that used to work for him and, and Clark Lee. So that's, you know, I know those are always challenging when you're playing guys that are head coaches that used to work for you. So I'm glad to see that, you know, the league is doing well on the road and the teams in the state are doing well on the road. Uh, last question, James. Yeah, Dave, uh, Trevally Price uh, recovered a fumble, nearly had a strip sack um, through two games. He's a freshman playing for you as well. Just evaluate his skill set. Yeah, Trevally plays really hard. You know, I mean, that's the one thing that no matter what, when you watch his film, he, he is straining. He's one of these guys that you never have to talk about effort with. And I love that about him. Um, not surprised that he made a play on the quarterback. He's probably been one of the better speed pass rushers we've had in training camp and and losing Daniel Joseph who was a good pass rusher for us losing Levi Jones who was a good pass rusher for us you know it's great to see Trevally taking on that role because we need that you know where are we going to get that that rush from it's a question we have you know and so having him out there getting Peyton back will be helpful as well Jalen Parker did some good things rushing. Jordan Poole did some good things rushing. So, you know, we just got to keep working those guys. But Trevally will get better and better, you know, the more he plays and, and starts understanding how the flow of the game is. And he's going to get better and better. He's got a good career in front of him. He just keeps working. Thanks. All right, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. You bet. You guys have a great day.